All right, everybody, we do have some breaking news involving those hedge fund managers, former hedge fund managers, hedge fund managers, I should say, at Bear Stearns. I'm hurrying to get this out. Ralph Chiaffi, innocent of defrauding those hedge fund investors. Matthew Tanin, innocent of conspiracy. Now, keep in mind, this was a month-long trial. Uh, they went into deliberations just yesterday. So, bottom line, Chiaffi and Tanin, innocent in the biggest trial in the subprime probe. Everybody has been watching this very, very closely. So, again, Blockbuster, Ralph Chaffee, innocent of defrauding the hedge fund investors, and Matthew Tanine, innocent of conspiracy as well. You know, Dennis, you saw those headlines. We were talking about them in the break. You're not surprised. Not at all. When I saw the, the, that it came up, first of all, to think that they were only in deliberations for one day. When that happens historically, you're going to find the defendant not guilty. Finding conspiracy charts is a very difficult thing to prove. And the complexity of this trade, I, I, am I surprised at all? I would have been surprised if they had had a guilty verdict. We also heard from the judge who said, you know, hang on a second to the prosecutor. I don't really buy a lot of this stuff, and that's not something that the judge typically does in this kind of case. Right. As soon as that happened, you knew it was going to be that way. It had to, I, I, we shouldn't be surprised. I, I'm not sure if this sends any signal at all to Wall Street, actually. And I don't know Mr. Chiaffi or Mr. Tanin. Right. I'm actually glad they were found not guilty. I, I have to say, wait, cer wait, certainly, why? even if... Why? I, 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 reading what they did and seeing what they did, I'm not sure that they did anything incorrect. I mean, okay. they got caught in a, in a very bad circumstance. They made some very bad decisions, some very bad trades. But did they do anything that was um, despicable, that was evil, that was malevolent? No, I didn't see that at all. They made bad trading decisions. Mm -hmm. That's not, in my opinion, something that should be you, you should be put to prison for. We well, want, we Ralph want to... Chiaffi allegedly shifted right $2 million of his own <laughs> money from the losing hedge fund into one that wasn't going to get hurt. Um, that I can't, I, that I don't know. Listen, we want to bring in our Sue Keenan. Sue, you've been tracking this trial, uh, this trial of Chaffee and Tanine. So give us your thoughts here as these, uh, as the uh, verdict comes down. Uh, yeah, quite a surprise. And, and again, a big blow to the prosecution, given that this is the first of, of many cases that will likely follow uh, regarding the um, mortgage meltdown. What's key, and you're looking at, at Chaffee right now, Ralph Chaffee, one of the uh, former Bear Stearns fund managers, again, acquitted of the charges against him. It was he who faced the additional charge of uh, the insider trading, having removed some of his funds from the, uh, the fund he managed or some of his own personal investment. A big issue in this case was skin in the game. If you recall at the time, what a lot of investors wanted to know is how much of the fund manager's own money was in the funds. They also wanted to know what the redemptions were. And those were the key issues that the jury had to decide. Now, going into the deliberations, even the judge himself, Frederick Block, questioned, I'm not sure what the insider trading charge is. He said, what was the material information? And also, the defense argued that while Chaffee did remove two million of his uh, own investments from the fund, he left the rest of his money in. So that was also a question that the jury must have looked at and, again, decided there wasn't enough evidence of insider trading here. What did they know? Again, the defense argued that these people, these fund managers, were not in the business of predicting the future. They couldn't possibly have known the outcome of the market. It was their job to advise and, and based on past performance, based on their experience and looking at the markets, to advise their investors accordingly. So again, what well, you just heard our, our guests say, they argued we may have been guilty of bad, giving bad advice, but there was no fraud here. There was no intent to defraud. Now, getting back to the issue of intent, that's what's key. We know that going into this case, there were a lot of emails, what looked like very indicting emails. One in particular that got a lot of press coverage was the one that said the subprime market is toast. Now, this indicated that the two fund managers had a lot of private conversations between each other on the possible demise of the fund, but but again, what was argued to the jury was that a lot of these emails were ambiguous. They didn't know which way the market was going at the time. Carol, they argued they couldn't predict the future. Back to you. All right, got it, Sue. I do want to bring in now Bloomberg Television contributing editor Bill Cohan. He's also author of The House of Cards. So, Bill, this verdict has come down against uh, Matthew Tanine and Ralph Chiaffi, and they're innocent. Um, we're talking with Dennis Garman. He's not surprised. The uh, jury came back uh, pretty quickly in this one. What uh, Were you surprised at this? 
Well, I mean, there was plenty of ambiguity in the email traffic that, um, uh, you know, would have, could, have, could have suggested any number of things about their thinking. And so I think the jury responded to that. It was not clear cut at all. Uh, and, and these emails showed it. And the government tried to make the case that there were, you know, their testimony that, that there was, uh, they were full of lies, that everything they were doing was as a result of lying. And uh, I think the email evidence showed that there was a lot of ambiguity. And I think that's what the jury responded to. Hey, Bill, is this a case of uh, the government scrambling to find a, a, a scapegoat here? I mean, is this a political move on the part of justice uh, to try and make a first strike as the, uh, as the crisis kind of escalated? Well, I mean, it certainly looks that way in retrospect. I mean, it didn't really feel that way at the time. It felt like, okay, these, these hedge funds went down. Uh, it seemed like uh, there was a lot of uh, strange behavior, and a lot of people lost a lot of money, and the crisis unfolded, and they needed to find someone to try to blame. Uh, you notice there's still been, been investigating the Lehman executives now some year after they failed, and uh, there's been no indictment there. I would expect that this would probably throw a huge wrench into uh, any potential indictment on the Lehman executives, so those people must be breathing a sigh of relief. I'm not sure this was the prosecutor's best uh, uh, job here in terms of uh, running this case. Uh, you know, they were, as I said, they relied upon this idea that there were all these lies, uh, that they were just lying the whole time, and I think there was too much ambiguity around it. Plus, I think the judge didn't really help them in some cases because this whole business of, of champion Chinese real estate deal dealings down in Florida was not really allowed to come into the case, and I think there was some strange evidence there that might have hurt uh, uh, the, those two men had the jury been able to hear that. Dennis, I want to bring you back into well, this. One of the things that gets me is that, that they made much of that the, the, the email that this business is toast. Uh, in, yeah. in my office, we're talking all the time uh, about being short of something and, and saying, man, this business is toast. Uh, <laughs> if, if this were to happen, this thing's going down forever. Uh, it happens all the time in, 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 a, in a trading arena. You send emails to your buddies and say, this, the, you know, this steel company looks like toast. You don't really mean that it's going to, to hell in a handbasket. It's not in obli oblivion. That's just trader talk. This thing has problems. It's probably going down. They made way too much of it, and I think the jury understood that this is just trader talk. Bill, you obviously well, agree. Well, I, I, I agree that that introduced a huge amount of ambiguity. ambiguity. I, mean, I think, I, I think the, the, what, the, what the government did is in their indictment, they took out selective pieces of these emails that looked devastating. When you read the whole emails, as I have done, and, and I quote from in the book, you can see that there was plenty of ambiguity related to this. Now, what made it, what made it dicey for Chaffee and Tanine is that Matthew Tanine opened this Gmail account and sent these emails from his Gmail account to Mrs. Chiaffi's, uh Gmail or private account, and why would he do that? Why wouldn't he just do it from the Bear Stearns account if he wasn't, you know, if it didn't have a feel for some sort of duplicity to it? But the jurors thought through that too. And by the way, the judge wouldn't let a lot of those uh, Gmail emails into the case either. What about Chiaffi, though, moving uh, his money? I mean, I know that he left some money in there, but he still pulled out $2 million, which for uh, the average person on Main Street is a substantial amount. Was he just hedging risk, you think? No, I mean, I think here again, more ambiguity. I mean, he was, he was uh, appointed uh, in like March or April of 2007 to run a third hedge fund. And, you know, the rule of the road is that each you know, hedge fund managers need to have some skin in the game invested in their hedge funds. And no other person in this third hedge fund had anything invested. So Chiaffi moved $2 million from one of the other two hedge funds into this third one. So he had $2 million in each of them. And, you know, that is easily explained. Explainable and uh, you know, it is logical. The government tried to use that as somehow being deceitful. Now he did not reveal that to other investors, but the problem was that when they asked the other investors if that mattered to them, they said no, that wouldn't have mattered. So that hurt the government's case too. Bill, let me ask you. I mean, so obviously the the prosecution's, the government's case, maybe not as strong, and certainly in terms of what they based it on. But do you still have questions about Chaffee and Tanine in terms of what they did in running those hedge funds? Of course. Well, you know, far be it from me to second guess a jury of their peers' decision, but I go back in my mind to this 
smoking gun memo that they did reference briefly in the case, the smoking gun memo that came out uh, from uh, Bear Stearns to uh, their brokers in, in and around, I think it was July of 2007, as the hedge funds were failing, they said in this memo, which is in black and white, it says, you'll probably get questions as to why, you know, it seemed like we were investing in only 6% some prime mortgages, when in fact the fund was investing in 60% of its assets in, hedge, in, in, in subprime mortgages. And that fact was never revealed to investors. And I, if I were an investor, I'd be really upset about that. And this is a black and white memo that said, yes, this is what happened. We did invest 60% in, in subprime mortgages mortgages when you thought it was only 6%. And if I were an investor, I would have been upset about that. That got mentioned in the case, but I guess the jury didn't think too much of that. Is, is that criminal? No, that's a tort. That's a, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that's a Maybe civil that's a circumstance. Civil. That's a civil yes, circumstance. That a completely uh, I was going to point out, we could see at some point, obviously, investors bringing a civil suit. I don't think there's any question that you will. But that's a completely already been, by the way. Yeah, and they and, and well, they should. But that is completely different than taking a criminal case against somebody with the intent to put them into prison. Let me ask you, Bill. What do you, you mention uh, that this will have an effect on the Lehman Brothers uh, defendants or or, or future uh, defendants there? What about the Raja Retnam case? I mean, you could argue that a lot of things have been pulled out of context, at least as far as what we've read in reports of the Raja Retnam case as well. Well, I've read those transcripts, at least they were part of the, the government filings, and boy, the, the, they don't read well. I mean, maybe there's more to it. Maybe they've taken it out of context as well. I agree that when the indictments of Chaffee and Tanin came down, they didn't look good either. You go and you read the full emails, and there's a lot more ambiguity. These seem a little less ambiguous, I have to say, but, you know, we'll have to see. It'll play but, out, you know. I think everybody thought Chaffee and Tanin would be found guilty. Too. Dennis, you know, I got to ask, ask you, you talk about trader talk, right? And yeah. obviously these things that, uh, in the Roger Rednam case seem a little bit more damning, but no traders have to go over the line sometimes. There's a lot of bravado involved there. Everybody wants the inside scoop. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, well, you want the inside scoop as long as it's legal. I'm sorry. And, and, and some of the questions here, uh, when, when one of the givers of information says, don't tell who gave it to you, because if it does... You've crossed a line. I, I, I think you've crossed a very big line. I think there's a and, huge and difference between what happened what Chiaffi and Tanin did and what happened in, in Galleon. I think there's a monstrous difference. Yes, I would agree with that. And you had the, the woman who was a Bear Stearns Hedge Fund uh, uh, manager saying, you know, I'm going to be like Martha Stewart here if I get caught. She knew so, it. I mean, she knew it. She knew it. So, so bottom line, we've got 20 seconds left here. You know, uh, Bill, what does this mean for a future prosecution of, of any kind of fraud related to subprime? Does it mean anything, or is this a separate incident in your view? Well, I, I think each case is different. Uh, you know, the Lehman investigation that people have been talking about have been related to their fundraising that they did over the summer of 2008. Who knows what the emails show, but it's got to put a big wrench in the government's uh, prosecution scheme at the moment and trying to get somebody on the hook for the, what happened in this crisis. All right. Hey, Bill, thanks a lot. Thank you for joining us. William Cohen there, uh, Bloomberg contributor, as well as the author of House of Cards and uh, many other things as well.